So welcome to the master class on resume building. Now this is kind of a soft skill master class, irrespective of which field you are from. I hope that this will be very relevant for you, and I'm going to try my best to make it as fun as possible. Okay. So let's start. What we're going to learn today are uh, some of the basics resume do's and don'ts, resume tips for freshers, which I believe would be very very important for many of you here assuming you guys are students majority of you how you can tailor your resume for the job that you're applying what are the different types of resumes a few resume tools that you can use to build a good resume and before we start let me just introduce myself for those of you who don't know me my name is chintan mehta and i am a strategic alliance associate at iide I have completed my post graduation in digital marketing and addressed more than 3000 students on digital skills. Personally, I am a sports enthusiast. I follow cricket and football very passionately. So, just to make the session a bit interactive, why don't you guys go to the chat and tell me which sport do you like to watch or play? Can you tell me in the chat? Chess, cricket, football, cricket, football, football, badminton, F1, chess. MMA, Kho Kho, Tennis, Karam, Throwball, wow. All the cricket fans here, I hope you're not seeing like, if you can keep aside India, England for one hour, that would be awesome. And I'm a football fan myself. I'm a Manchester United supporter. So, and okay, badminton, table tennis. Okay, awesome, basketball. So, firstly, what is a resume? What do you guys think? What is a resume? Can anyone tell me in the chat? Just in one sentence, okay? Don't write an entire paragraph. What is a resume? Oh, Barcelona is my favorite team. I pity you right now. Introduction, something which describes us. It's an info of oneself. Short intro, description about our description. Okay, okay, wow. No shirt to sell ourselves. Amazing answer. Your resume is your marketing document. You are selling yourself to your potential employer or your recruiter, right? Or your interviewer. And whenever I'm seeing the side, I'm just reading the chats, okay? And someone also said, it's a mirror of yourself. That piece of paper represents you. And that is why it is such an important piece of document, right? And it is a documentary representation of yourself. As I said, a mirror rep representation of yourself and here first impressions are last impressions some of you might disagree that it is not always always true but in this case this is absolutely true if you have a bad interview no one is going to call you again and ask you to you know you want another try at that if you have given a bad resume they're not gonna give it to you back and say do you want to make some corrections and give it back to us Nothing like that is going to happen. First impressions are last impressions. Okay. And just a few fun facts for you guys. All it takes is the first 15 to 20 words of your resume to make an impression. And recruiters spend an average of just 6.25 seconds scanning a resume. So just use your own, lo use your own logic. A person is looking at your resume for 6 seconds. He or she is not going to read more than 15 to 20 words. So you have to put your best foot forward. Okay, you have one chance and you have to sell yourself heavily. Someone should look at your resume and be like, wow, I want to meet him or I want to meet her. Okay, your resume should blow their mind or at least make them force them to read your entire resume. Nearly 95% of recruiters utilize LinkedIn as a major sourcing tool to find candidates. Okay, 95%. So a good recruiter, a good interviewer will check out your LinkedIn before they call you for an interview. Okay, and I hope many of you guys here have attended the LinkedIn Essentials Masterclass so you know how important it can be. And finally, about 45% of recruiters state that resumes will get rejected for not including cover letter. How many of you guys know what's the meaning of a cover letter, by the way? Yes, yes, no, no in the chat. Know the difference between a cover letter and a resume? Anyone? Okay, cool. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clear this out in today's session. Right? <clears throat> so, let us start with the basic. 
resume do's i hope you guys have pen and paper in your hand please please make notes we won't be sharing this presentation or we won't be sharing this recording it is confidential data which is why we can't share it okay so please make notes at all times number 1 be strong and be selective i want you to keep in mind those fun facts which i told you 15 to 20 words 6 seconds you have that much time to impress someone in the first impression so you have to be absolutely strong and selective you need to show only that part which is your best not the good not better but the best part about yourself okay so be strong and be selective of what kind of content you are putting in your resume number 1 number 2 write order here um right now i am working in the digital marketing industry okay but my first internship it was in the finance industry my second internship was in the digital marketing industry and this is the third one or this is the third one right so moving forward if let's say i change my job okay i start working somewhere else i uh shift places so i will not include my finance internship in my resume because it is irrelevant to the industry that i'm working in and it is irrelevant information to my recruiter or my interviewer they don't need to know about my finance qualifications or my finance work experience right <clears throat> but if you are shifting industry like let's say right now you are in finance and you are shifting to hr or anything else and you don't have any prior experience in hr then you can include your finance work experience because it is work experience after all you have learned some skills you have learned something at your work which will help you in your future as well right so if you don't have any prior experience in the field that you want to work in put in your other work experience otherwise it's a complete no no and i hope all of you guys know that reverse chronological order is to be followed in your resume okay yes yes in the chat if you guys knew that reverse chronological order yeah okay cool so number 2 number 3 add transferable skills anyone here knows what's the meaning of transferable skills please answer in one sentence okay only in one sentence anyone here knows what's the meaning of transferable skills and don't type yes what are transferable skills tell me <clears throat> utility skills okay um helps others to learn no interact hmm okay let's say i am something that works in every field trupti awesome something that works in every field like your leadership skills your communication skills or your analytical skills they can be work they can be used in every field they are transferable from one job to another right common at any work alka awesome um ashan is saying uh, ashandeep is saying skills helpful in an array of fields correct you can use those skills at multiple jobs right that's the meaning of transferable skills tisha it's more actually soft skills and not hard skills like i am not my technical skills my hard skills right now are digital marketing if i'm shifting to finance my digital marketing my hard skills are not going to be useful my soft skills which are my interpersonal skills how good i am with people how good i am in communication or leadership those are my soft skills and usually your soft skills like general strength interpersonal skills communication skills they can be transferred from one job to another before and the most important point for me talk about efficiency and results okay let's say um neha tiwari here she had an internship at a social as a social media marketing internship just for an example she writes in her resume help the social media team grow on instagram that is a big no no you do not have to put in such a sentence you have to tell them rather you should tell them i helped the following on instagram grow by 20% this will force your interviewer to ask you questions about what you did and that is your chance to imp to impress your interviewer or your recruiter your potential employer right you have to put in sentences frame it such in such a manner that it forces your interviewer 
to ask you questions about it. You get more time in your interview, which will help you in impressing your employer or your potential employer, right? <clears throat> I grew from dash to dash in two months by doing, yeah, some something like that, right? Ayush Rajpal has given an amazing example. I grew from dash to dash in two months by doing so and so, right? Talk about efficiency and results. And they will ask you, how did you achieve these results? Okay. Next, align your LinkedIn profile. As we saw, 95% of recruiters, they will check out your LinkedIn before they call you for an interview. And if they see you're speaking about one thing on LinkedIn and you're speaking something else in your resume, that doesn't really create, create a good impression. Okay, you have to be uniform. You have to say the same kind of things at both places. Okay. <clears throat> Next, tweak it for each job opportunity. One size fits all does not work here. Okay, for every job that you're applying for, you need to have a different resume. And how you can tweak it, I will tell you. Okay, as we move forward, you only have to make some small, small changes. Okay, each time you just have to make small changes. What changes? I will tell you. So can you tell reverse chronological order means what? Yes, reverse chronological order means my latest work experience will come first. My 2021 work experience will be at the top of my resume. Then 2019, then 2018. Similarly for education as well, right? I graduated in 2019, 2020, whatever. That will be at the top. And my 12th standard education or my high school education will be at the bottom. Okay, reverse chronological is A, B, C, D. Reverse chronological is D, C, B, A. Okay. <clears throat> and of course, write professionally and flawlessly. As we saw earlier, 15 to 20 words, 6 seconds. If there are a lot of grammatical errors in your resume, you are not making a good first impression. It is a very, very bad impression. Okay. It may not be relevant for the job, your language. It may not be relevant for the job, but still in your resume, it plays a very important role, right? And apply at the right time. Now, this is just a recommendation for you guys, just a small recommendation that <clears throat> you should be applying for a job within one week of the job opening or one to three business days. If you're applying after one month, most likely the job position does not exist anymore or it has been filled, meaning it has been filled. Yes, Rupal, I will be sharing some template. <clears throat> All right. Okay, guys, we will do a Q&A session at the end of the session. Okay, for sure. You have some questions. I will for sure do a Q&A session at the end. Okay. Yeah, can you please? Yes, yes, I will. I will. Okay. <clears throat> and make adjustments based on results. I'll be honest with you guys. Right now, the job market is really tough because of the pandemic. Okay, not many people are finding jobs, people are losing their jobs, experienced people are losing their jobs, right? Which is why this is extremely, extremely important. Especially if you're facing a lot of rejections, you need to do this. Call up your employer, your the, that, the place that you applied for and they rejected you, call them up and ask them what went wrong. Why was I not selected? Was it my interview? Was it my resume? Did I lag somewhere? so that you know what you need to change. Okay. And there is no shame in asking what went wrong. Okay, it is, if you want to improve yourself, you have to keep your ego aside. If you want a good job, if you want to improve your resume, if you want to improve yourself in your interview, you need to call up your employer. Many of them won't even answer. They won't even pick up. But out of 10, three will. Okay, two or three will. And they will tell you what went wrong. Okay, so I would highly recommend, especially if you're facing a lot of rejections, nothing negative in facing rejections. I have faced them myself, right? I was facing them myself previous year when I was working for internships. And you have to make changes based on the results that you get. Okay. <clears throat> yes, Aisha, I will be sharing some quality sample resumes. Okay. So are all of you guys with me so far? Yes, yes, in the chat. You guys have understood the resume do's? Okay, all right. Awesome. Great. 
cool 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 wow i am loving this chat it's like oh, awesome cool okay okay gautam i the how to get internship install internshala it's the like the number one app for internships and there's also nokri.com these are the two places like most popular in india but if you're looking for an internship especially internshala is the place to be you have to be there and apply for multiple jobs you can apply for multiple jobs it's not like you should only apply for one or two apply for five six not a problem okay all right cool okay cool as well um international as well i'm not quite sure for international it is linkedin okay if you want an international internship try linkedin okay guys you don't have to share any links in the chat for international okay very helpful of you but you don't have to do that they will do it themselves uh no you won't get the session recording all right so moving forward to the resume don'ts leave out personal details you have 6 seconds you have 15 to 20 words don't waste it in showing your marital status or passport number or pan card number or aadhar card number it is completely irrelevant for your job right no job would want to know what is your relationship status or pan card number or aadhar card they will ask you all this if you are selected for the job okay so leave out personal details only be strong and be selective first point of resume do is be strong be selective number 2 don't include references now many people make this error unfortunately they think that my references from my professors my academic professors or my past employers will help but they do kind of help but if your interviewer has not asked for it don't include it in your resume first of all never include it in your resume if you are going for the interview you can keep it ready with yourself in your bag that if you if you like some references from my past employers or my past professors i have them ready okay i have a soft copy ready have a hard copy ready okay but don't include references in your resume right and don't neglect keywords or use unprofessional ids how many of you guys still use unprofessional ids like these be honest okay please be very honest devjit don't include references that's what i said don't include references in your resume you can keep it ready during your interview before your interview and ask them that if you'd like i have it ready with myself okay all of you guys are saying no at least in your childhood when you were in 8th standard 9th standard 10th standard you had these i had i had myself i had um i was a basketball follower at that time and i had lebron james 23 at gmail.com wow you guys are way more mature wow <clears throat> uh, no jail no need to type reference can be provided after if as needed if they want they will tell you themselves okay i never use a, okay wow <clears throat> cool so okay great so if you, you guys are way, way too mature in comparison to myself right and next point don't say anything arguable or lie about employment gaps if you have some kind of an employment gap or you have personal problems family problems health problems anything do not lie about it you don't want to start a new relationship on the foundation of a lie okay it is never ever ever recommended okay so whatever it is be truthful and if you be truthful it also speaks about what kind of a person you are right so totally never lie about your employment gaps and also also companies legit okay legit i'm not joking they do check out your social media as well before you are called for your interview okay so please don't write on your social media i hate narendra modi i love narendra modi i hate rahul gandhi or whatever you feel about those weirdos please don't say it in your please don't post about it on your social media okay nobody cares about it and just keep keep it avoided okay so <clears throat> next don't use unfamiliar terms like i am working in the digital marketing industry and just to give an example there are different things like a click through rate right a click through rate or seo score or there are various things which maybe someone outside of my industry won't understand it okay so i should avoid using 
terms like click through rate being additional marketer for someone outside of the industry they won't understand it so do not use unfamiliar terms so these were the basic resume do's and don'ts all of you guys with me so far yes yes in the chat <clears throat> Okay, all right, awesome, great, cool. So moving forward, resume tips for freshers, which I think is very much relevant for all of you guys who are here. I am assuming many of you are students, majority of you, and let's find out. Highlight your skills, skills that you may have picked up in different fields. Now, being a student, I was a student myself not very long ago. You may or may not have an internship. Highly recommended, find an internship. Okay, highly, highly, highly recommended. Do a one-month internship, two-month internship, that's it. I'm not asking you to do a six-month internship. Do it for one month or two months. Okay, you will find out. I, I, I maybe I would have given this example earlier as well about myself, but since there are many people who are attending this for the first time, I'll tell you again. My first internship, as I said, was in the finance sector. I thought I wanted to become an MBA in finance. That's what I thought when I was 18 years old. I got my internship and I realized I don't want to make a career in finance, right? My internship made me realize that I did four months and I thought, I don't see myself doing this after 10 years or 15 years. I just can't. So I switched my field and I came across digital marketing. I did an internship again and I thought, this is something that I can do. I like doing this. And that's why I'm here right now. So highlight your skills. And number two, if you don't have any work experience, which could be the case with many of you, no problem. I hope you are at least a part of some college committee, some college committee, some Rotaract club, some NGO, you have done some kind of volunteer work. I really, really hope you have done that at least. Because think from the point of view of an employer, a potential employer. That person is thinking that, okay, someone has come in. Right. Um, let's just take an example. Let's say uh, Dhawal, right? Dhawal has internship experience. He has completed his graduation. He has internship experience. He has come in for the interview. And with Dhawal has come in Prajakta. Okay. Dhawal and Prajakta have come. Prajakta does not have any work experience. She has not been a part of any college committee as well. No road track club, nothing. She just completed her graduation. An employer will think that after 11 o'clock in the morning, 12 o'clock in the morning, they will utilize this time learning something. Whereas Prajakta was just whiling her time away. Not Nothing personal. I hope you don't take it anything personal. Okay, I'm just giving an example. But think from the point of view of an employer. This person has utilized his time, has learned something, has actual work experience. Whereas this person has done nothing. Why should I give this person a chance? No one is going to do that. Okay. So you will be way, way, way behind in the pecking order. Right. So get an internship, you know, get, or at least be a part of a college committee. Okay. Cool. <clears throat> Harsh Patel, if your experience is not a professional experience, if it's some kind of NGO work, volunteer work, please include it. It speaks volumes about what kind of a person you are. Okay. So if it's not professional experience, not a problem. Yes, it can be included in your resume, NCC, NSS, it can be. All right, so moving forward and highlight, highlight academic credentials. So if you don't have any work experience at all, I hope you are really good at, at your academics at least. You have scored 8, CGPA, 8.5, 9.0, something like that. And then you can highlight that part. So highlight academic credentials in case you don't have any work experience at all. This is for you guys. Okay. Next, keep it current. As I said, one size fits all does not work. You are doing new projects each time. You are doing new internships. You are doing some kind of online projects, online courses, free courses. Please include them in your resume and keep it current. Keep it updated at all times. And of course, no grammatical errors. As I said, first impression, last impression, write professionally, write flawlessly. Right? And know the terms. Now, um, should I allow anyone to speak here, actually? Should I do that? Anyone would like to speak? <clears throat> Talk to me. Just unmute. 
<clears throat> okay, let's um let's let's try. I hope I'm going to ask you a question. Okay, I'm going to ask you a question. Um, let's have the first person who said yes. Ansi, you are allowed to talk now. Hi. 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 Can you tell me the difference between curricular, co-curricular, and extracurricular? Yeah, curricular means the only thing we do in your syllabus. Okay. It's only syllabus and extracurricular activities beyond your syllabus, what you are indulged in. Like All right, and different fest we could participate in the and the various activities other than in which includes in your syllabus. Okay, and co-curricular? Co-curricular, uh, I don't know the exact meaning of it. But okay, uh, no problem. Okay, well, thank you so much. Um, you can unmute. Uh, you can mute yourself now. Thank you so much for your participation. So, as she said very rightly, curricular is your syllabus. Let's just go back to school. Yeah, curricular is your syllabus. All the students have to have to have to do it. Number two, co-curricular. During your school, your schooling, you were a part of the school basketball team or annual day festival or sports day festival. Those are your co-curricular activities, overall development of a student. And number three are your extracurricular. In the evening time, you went to basketball class, sports class, music class, chess class, dance class, anything. Those are extracurricular, your hobbies, your passions, and your interests. Okay. So I hope all of you now know the difference between these three terms and no capital letters, right? When you are chatting with someone on WhatsApp and you write, why did you do this in full caps? It shows, right, that you're angry or you're pissed off or you're at least disappointed. So please do not use capital letters at all uh, in your resume, right? Moving forward and ask, most important part, ask people to question you and ask someone to review your resume. Number one, Please do not ask your mother or your father to question you. Okay, please do not do that. They, there are good chances that they will be lenient. So please ask maybe your elder sibling or elder cousin and ask someone to review your resume. Meaning, most preferably here, if you are looking to get into the finance industry, ask someone who, who has experience in that industry to review your resume. Ask you questions about it. That would be the best part. And tell that same person to question you as well. What kind of questions come to your mind when you read my resume? Okay, so number one, again, please not your mother or father. And number two, if it's someone from the industry that you're looking to get into, that would be the best. All right, <clears throat> so that any flaws can be picked and rectified. That person already has experience. Okay, Devjit, your parents have more experience, of course, not doubting that but they might be lenient. Okay, they might be lenient, right? So, before we move forward, are all of you guys with me so far? And if you guys are like liking this session, can you like just type fun in the chat? If you're liking this session, just type fun in the chat so far. We are almost 30 minutes into the session. Okay, cool, awesome, great. I am, I'm so glad. That's a good use of your time. And here, we have done the resume do's, resume don'ts, and recommendations for your resume. Next part. And like the highlight of this session, you need to have a one pager resume. That's it. I, I okay, I'll just share my experience with you. I, I myself attended a, res a resume building session some months or some a, a year back, a couple of years back. And that person, had eight years of work experience, okay? Eight years. And he had a one-pager resume. So, if you have done some kind of college committee, internships, road track clubs, you have to find out, pick the best part and put it in one page, okay? Maybe after 10 years. When you have 10 years of work experience, move forward to two pages. But before that, one page is the way to go, okay? Uh, Ashan, the page length is like the standard page size, I guess, A4. Yeah. Hmm. Resume should be one page. That's what I'm saying. Resume, Vrinda, Vrinda Anand, resume should be one page. Right? Now, 
how to write professional summaries. Number one, two to three sentences long. And this is the most important part of a resume, by the way. Should be placed at the top of your resume. It's the only way to make sure your resume grabs the uh, recruiter's attention. Like 15 to 20 words, six seconds. Professional summary, your two, three sentences will define how it is going to go forward. And the most effective summary is the one for the job that you're applying for. Tailor your resume. All right. So let's just have a few examples of a job description. One company is looking for an amazing data-driven inbound marketer to own the majority of marketing funnel for our company in charge of site traffic, converting leads, uh, converting new traffic to leads, nurturing those leads into customers. And the latter of its sales leadership will help you accomplish. This is a typical job description. If you are applying for this job, this is what your professional summary should look like. Highly intrinsically self-motivated use words like these. Graduate seeking to fill in the position of an inbound marketer. The main keyword, inbound marketer, inbound marketer. Use the same words in your professional summary that are used in the job description, right? Looking to put my strong data skills, communication skills to help the company achieve its goals, right? These are the kind of sentences you should have in your resume. Okay. Let's take another example. This company is looking for a social media manager. Do you tweet, share, post to social media in your sleep, what it takes to grow, implementing strategies and tactics, engage and retain customers, command best practices, and all of this. You can read it for yourself. Okay. I'm giving you 10 seconds. Please properly read this job description. 10 seconds. Yeah, so what kind of a professional summary should you have if you are looking for this job? Highly motivated individual certified digital marketer with a keen interest and knowledge of social media marketing. Looking to obtain the position of a social media marketer. Put to use my creativity and managerial skills. One example. Second example. Motivated individual with in-depth knowledge on how to successfully implement marketing strategies, boost organic traffic, convert leads into customers. These are the kind of words you should have in your summary. Convert leads into customers. If you hire me, I will give you results. Your, this is, these are the kind of sentences which will impress your recruiter or your interviewer. Okay. <clears throat> Next, just a few more examples of professional summaries. An articulate, creative, innovative young adult with a natural proven ability to communicate and build relationships with potential clients. Passionate, high-achieving student who is a quick learner and works well in a fast-paced, ad adaptive environment. Right? And look at all the job summaries. Three sentences, four sentences. Three, actually it's three. This is just like two, three words extra. Three sentences is all it took. Right? Look at these two. Look at these two. These sentences is all it takes to build a good professional summary. Okay. Just another example. If you want, you can take a quick screenshot, uh, take a quick, uh, quick uh, snapshot of this slide and we can move forward. Right. Result oriented marketing manager. Results include, I help my previous company go, go grow from this to this within this, within this time period. Right. Just to give an example. These are the kind of things that you should have. Okay. So how to perfectly tailor your resume for the position that you're applying for next section of today's masterclass, make sure your resume gets seen. If you have a friend, a friend of friend, bloody hell, even a friend of friend of friend, please just put in a message that I am applying at your company that you're working for. And if you could put in a word in that department, it would be great. You automatically out of, let's say these are 50 people and you are right now here, you will automatically go here to have a recommendation from someone already working at the company. Okay. And fun fact for all of you guys, Zomato does not do external hiring. Not even fun fact, actually kind of a sad news for some of you. Zomato does not do external hiring at all. Hina recording won't be shared. Please stop typing the same message.
Zomato will hire you only if someone who is working at Zomato gives your reference. And only then you will be called for an interview. That is if there is a position is open. Right? They won't hire you out of Nokri.com or Internshala. You won't see Zomato internships there. Okay. <clears throat> so if you have a connection at that company, well and good. Even if it's a friend of friend of friend, please do that. Okay. And okay, Zomato does campus hiring. Okay. Uh, then if they have tie-ups with specific institutes, they may. But Nokri.com, Internshala, they won't be there. If they have a kind of a, you know, tie-ups with specific institutes, they may. All right. So, <clears throat> and how to build connections? LinkedIn. You can use that as well. Next, how to highlight your skills in your resume. You can make an entire separate section in your resume to highlight your main dominant skills. It is still a one page of resume, but you can still do that, right? And these are the kind of sentences you should have. Please, please take note, guys. Extensive experience in multidisciplinary research, excellent organizational verbal and communication, verbal written communication. Excuse me, verbal and communi uh, written communication skills, meticulous attention to details. Check this out exceptional analytical skills, goal oriented, enthusiastic, passionate. These are the kind of words you should have in your resume. Okay, just check this out. Take a take quick notes or just take a screenshot so that <clears throat> you do not forget this. Okay, promptness and dedication to work. Open-minded and highly adaptable to new innovation, ability to work for, oh my God, I wouldn't really recommend this. Okay, this should be like kind of a last recommendation personally from my side. I, okay, don't put in this, okay? Ability to work for long and extended hours. No, your, they will take undue advantage of you, right? <clears throat> okay, okay, well, guys, guys, I'm showing it. I'm showing it, one second. Cool. Just check it out quickly. <clears throat> okay. All right. Cool. You have these, these three. You have these three. And yeah, this is about it. Cool. I hope you guys have taken notes, taken screenshots, whatever you like. Um, Rohan, if the company has asked for a video interview, like send a video of yourself, then do a video resume, not really required. All right. <clears throat> cool. So how to highlight your technical skills? Now, technical skills are something that cannot be described in a very creative manner, right? So you can keep it simple. Okay, keep it simple, like extensive knowledge of best practices for content marketing on the internet, right? Check this out. Technical proficiency. I, I know these many web languages, HTML, CSS, or PHP, and just some common sentences that you can use in your resume. Okay. You do not have to like write beyond fabulous for your technical skills. It's, it's kind of okay. You can keep it extremely simple. All right. Check this out. SEO tools. I know these many tools. Moz, Google Keyword Tool, uh, Site Explorer, Backlink Checker, Google Analytics, Google Ads, Facebook Paid Ads. Demonstrated abilities in resolving bottlenecks and achieving targets. Oh, this is something that your interviewer will really like. If you are someone who can achieve strong targets, awesome. You can, you know, you should definitely use this line. Demonstrated abilities in resolving. And just don't put it for the sake of it, okay? If you are someone who thinks you can do it, then put it. Otherwise, it's just like, <clears throat> you understood my point. Anyway, so how you can frame your sentences uh, for your work experience? Number one, and again, extremely, extremely important. Pay attention to this, okay? 100% attention. Week volunteered at a college after college student awareness program. No, 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 never. At least after this, after this session, you will never use something like this. Okay. Volunteered at an after college program to create awareness among students on various topics. Manageable. Okay. Acceptable. Please never do this, but this is also like kind of acceptable. This is what you should have. Develop various innovative projects to introduce college students to mental health awareness, anti-bullying policies, the importance of voting rights, etc. 
your interviewer will want to ask you why were you part of this what drove you to it to maybe even start this or maybe you are someone who joined this program someone else in the college committee started it you joined it so you can tell them why did you join it and then of course what kind of results did you achieve after doing all of this this is extremely weak no one will this does not invoke curiosity okay this invokes curiosity they will want to ask you questions okay so um, all right all right yeah online courses certificate help and again take take notes take notes very quickly action words in your resume design implemented maintained characterized collaborated these are the kind of words you should have in your resume right and then using these words these are the sentences that you can form responsible for working with the clients and understanding their requirements customizing landing pages and the flow of information maintaining reports for individual clients and explaining the inferences from analytics these are the kind of sentences you can make with all these words okay action words you did something right you did something that's what this this is trying this is trying to convey okay and what are the main types of resumes all right by the way are all of you with me so far yes yes in the chat i was it has been a while since i asked this all of you with me so far okay cool awesome so moving forward wow we have oh, damn we have more than 850 people right now awesome so different types of resumes number 1 chronological resume your this is your typical resume you have no employment gaps you have done fabulously in your entire work history this is a chronological resume okay and chronological here is reverse chronological okay do 2015 to 2018 then it is 2014 to 2015 look at these dates okay this is reverse chronological order someone who, someone asked me this question this is reverse chronological order right next functional resume if you have for example if you have employment gaps for any reason health reasons personal reasons family reasons mental health problems anything you need to focus on your skills that you have instead of your work experience some skills that you're really really good at for example public speaking or data analytics or anything else you can focus on your skills in a functional resume okay next a combination you showcase your skills and you showcase your work experience right <clears throat> that's like a combination of resume and uh, a combination of functional resume and a chronological resume okay and a very small part of today's master class application tracking systems right so if you do not want to get rejected by a robot okay so these are just some of tips and tricks that you should be following avoid using avoid okay i'm not saying completely don't i'm saying avoid avoid using text boxes write your entire points in a in a text okay you have written three points you have put a box around it don't do that okay and this should be the correct order professional summary core competencies and achievements professional experience and education again it is a recommendation if you have your work experience first and your core competencies and achievements second it's not like you will be completely rejected okay it is a recommendation that you should follow but professional summary always it will be at the top next to your photograph it will be at the top okay just a fun question actually how many of you here think that you should have your face in your resume yes or no in the chat what do you guys think should you have your photograph in your resume yes we should no 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 yes yes no 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 not necessary okay yes it is not necessary it is not necessary agreed but i think you should have okay no it does not build credibility no your photograph does not build credibility in your resume it is important because your face is the most unique thing about you 
compare your face, like there are seven million people, and there are I think seven people who look kind of similar to you, and which makes your face your most unique thing about you. Like if someone sees a face, and maybe and this is just accidental, okay? They will remember this face. It can happen, right? So you can put in your photograph in your resume. Cool. It feels relatable, no error. Okay, okay. All right, cool, awesome. So I'll just share my screen again and one second. All right, so this is application tracking system. So guys, if you are really enjoying this session, then please take a snapshot, a screenshot of this slide or any other slide that you like the lot or maybe that comes forward and put it on your Instagram story and do tag IIDE and please tag me. Okay, I will really, really appreciate it. I will definitely repost your story and it will make me really, really happy. So just five seconds if anyone wants to take a screenshot of this slide or any other slide. Okay. Okay, all right. Richa, you have to be extremely honest about your career gaps. Okay, please do not lie. Okay, smile, please. Okay, of course. <laughs> okay, all right. I hope you have taken the photograph. Okay, thank you, guys. <clears throat> so, moving forward, getting creative with your resume. Okay, keep the format, layout, and structure of your resume the same. So, if you want to change your professional summary, one, two pointers about your work experience. And by the way, your work experience should be in pointers. Okay, it has to be, has to be in pointers do not keep it like in paragraphs please please follow pointers okay and keep the format and layout same so if you want to make changes for the job that you're applying for you want to include words that are in the job description you can do it quickly and easily you don't have to build the entire resume again right from where you can build such resumes i will tell you the tool <clears throat> and just a few recommendations again you can use color blocking there are different colors which in evoke different emotions. Okay, so you can use different colors on your resume, number one. Number two, use timelines. You should definitely do this. This is not a recommendation. I, I'm saying this personally that you should definitely do this. If you are at one place for like four or five years, it like it shows really good. Okay, that this person is if if this person is in, he or she is in for the long term. And again, reverse chronological order. 2015, 16 experience first, 14, 15, 13, 14. Okay. And of course, the name of the company and your position. And here, once you have your work experience, that is just the previous point that I explained, irrelevant work experience. Um, my finance internship, my digital marketing internship, my digital marketing job. I'm applying for a new job. My digital marketing job, digital marketing internship, digital marketing internship. That's it. My finance internship need not show up here. All right. And let's uh, just have a small little game. Okay. Left or right, you need to tell me quickly. Okay. Left or right, which resume do you think looks better? Can you tell me in the chat? Quickly, guys. Left, 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 left. Okay. All of you guys are saying left. Now you have understood what a good resume is. Okay. This is ants on your screen. Look at yourself. Think from the point of view of an employer. Would you want? Would you want to read this or this? All of you guys have said le uh, left, right, right. This is like ants on your screen. It's in paragraphs. Please not recommend it. I think the chats are open. You have you people are replying to hosts and panelists instead of everyone. Okay, the chats are open for all. And now left or right. Come on, quickly. Oh, I'm so sorry. The chats are not open. Ah, the chats are open now. I'm so sorry, guys. Left, 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 left. All of you guys have again said left, right? Next, left or right? Quickly, guys, quickly, very fast. Left, 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 left. Okay, awesome. Cool, great. And now, left. Or right. I think my expression gave away. Oh, none of the above. 
one person said none of the above. I'm just gonna uh, Harsh Kumar, Harsh Kumar Gupta. It is, it was a trick question. None of the above. The natural human eye reads from left to right. Here, what will you read from left to right? What will you read here from left to right? It is completely jumbled. Okay, so neither. You should not have any of these resumes. Okay. And just the almost to the end of this session, as I said earlier, 70% of employers use social media to screen candidates during the hiring process. Fun fact. You know what, guys? The income tax department is also checking out social media these days. Actually, not these days, for quite some time now. So let's say you're not paying a lot of income tax. Okay. And just for fun, they opened your file and they will check out your social media. And if you are going to multiple holidays, partying a lot, okay, you're going to US, you're going to UK, you're going to Europe. And then they will say, this person has not really paid much income tax. Okay? They're just chatting in the office and they will show up at your house. You are partying so much, you are holidaying so much. How come you're not paying income tax? Okay, and this is really, really this really happens. Okay, I'm not kidding. Okay, wow, Dave, you don't know what income tax is. Please go and Google. All right. So, similarly, even for your jobs, seventy percent of employers use social media. Forty-seven percent said they wouldn't call call a person for an interview if they can't find you online. So, if you think you're too cool for social media, at least be on LinkedIn. At least be on LinkedIn. Okay, people are people do check find you find you on online. And 57% said that they found some, something during social screenings that led them to not hire someone. So maybe you love Modi or you hate Modi and your interviewer, he does, he has the vice versa. He or she has the vice versa. So just, I know it's kind of a light, please take it in a light manner, but be careful of what you're putting on social media. Okay. It has become like a part and parcel of our daily life. Okay, uh, what, how can students be on LinkedIn? Swaraj, I had one entire session on LinkedIn Essentials. You can maybe wait when we have it next and then you can show up. Okay, all right. Thank you, Darshit. I'm glad you're enjoying the session. And how to make a perfect cover letter. The difference, ladies and gentlemen, between a cover letter and a resume is... Your resume covers your entire employment history and your skills and your achievements. That is your resume, your entire employment history. Your cover letter, you need to emphasize on the skills that you are going to apply at that job, the one you are applying for. Okay, you need to emphasize on your skills, why, why the company is a great fit for you and why you are a great fit for the company. That is a cover letter. You emphasize on the skills that you are going to apply at the job that you are applying for. Okay, That is a cover letter. Your resume, on the other hand, is your entire employment history. 